So how to survive the Cocoa Head Trail. I'm sure you've seen those amazing shots. You've seen that railway shot going up to the top. You've probably seen some going down. You've probably seen some of those epic selfie shots at the top where it's like they're at the top of the mountain overlooking a, a very beautiful ocean. And those are all good, but this video is more so about how to get up there. And it's not as easy as it may seem. I mean, is it okay to be real and honest and transparent about that journey part from the beginning to the top? And if so, then I hope that this video may help someone if they're trying to figure out what they can expect. So if you want epic selfies, if you want drone shots, this is not the video for you. There are thousands of those, I'm sure, online. But this is, again, more so about what you can expect if you decide to go. So just some quick things about the hike itself. It's located in Hawaii Kai. It's on the east side of the island of Oahu. And it took us about 50 minutes to get to the top of the hike. And then we rested up there, we took some pictures, we, we just looked around, enjoyed it. And then it took us about 20 minutes or so to get to the bottom. So I think that's pretty average. I wouldn't say I'm in shape, but I wouldn't say I'm out of shape. I, 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 I would say expect about an hour and that includes the breaks. Expect about an hour to get to the top and then down. For me, it was a lot faster. For other people, I think they're having a harder time. But maybe you know, 50 minutes to an hour going up, maybe about 30 minutes or so going down. Of course, the view at the top is amazing, so make sure that you spend a lot of time up there resting, talking with others, taking pictures. You definitely earned it if you make it to the top. And in terms of parking, pretty good parking at the bottom because it's sort of next to a park, and there's also bathrooms and facilities down there. In terms of a rating, I would say this is probably an intermediate to a difficult hike. I guess it depends on your physical fitness level. I didn't see a lot of kids there. There were a lot of adults and a lot more younger adults i'd say in their maybe in their 20s to early 30s but there weren't a lot of kids there there were some dogs on the trail which was pretty impressive uh, but a lot of people i think are are, are just there they just want to experience it one time and then they that's it for them there's definitely some hardcore athletes on the trail but i think for the most part most of the people are just average so I would highly recommend the Cocoa Head Trail hike for anyone to do. I think that it's pretty physically challenging, but if you can do it, I would say try it. It's a nice thing to do, sort of check that off your list here. I think because it's a lot more challenging, you're not gonna get as many tourists there, but it's still pretty well traveled. But I'd highly recommend that if you have a chance to at least try it. So tip number one, I would say get there early. Get there as early as possible because you don't want to battle the sun. We started at about 7 a.m., which is actually a little late. But fortunately for us, it was really cloudy, which was super nice because had it been sunny from the beginning, I can guarantee it would have been twice three times, five times as hard to get up to the top because the sun would have just beaten down. There is like no shade on this trail. It's basically railroad tracks up to the top and on the side, there's some places where you can rest, but there's no real place to rest. It's not like any other hike I've seen where, you know, you have some shade, you can like rest, you know, this is completely different. You can rest on the sides of the trail, but even then, you got so many people trying to go up and down, even that's a little bit tight. You really wanna make sure that you're not battling the sun, if at all possible. I know that there are people that go during the middle of the day, that's crazy to me, but you know, if, if that's when you can go, that's when you can go. But for me, I would say try to go as early as possible because when that sun came up, when we're going down, I just looked at the people coming up and I was just thinking, man, it's, it's gonna be pretty tough for you. Uh, good luck. Tip number two, and this one is the biggest one, I would say. You need to pace yourself, and what that means is different for everyone. This is one of those hikes where if you're a very proud person, if you are very competitive with other people, you have a very good chance of kind of burning yourself out, and I think that's what happened to me, especially in the beginning. I'm not ashamed to say, but I took about five or six breaks going up because I was exhausted. And let me just say, is it just me or on every break that I took, I thought I was gonna throw up? Maybe, it, okay, maybe it's just me. Again, 
we're being real and open and transparent here about this hike. Every time I took a break, I thought I was gonna throw up and I felt so sick and I was tired and exhausted. And it felt like I needed to take a break every minute going up. Like when you start off, you're thinking, ah, oh, this is not that bad because the, the, the bottom stairway is, it's, it's a gradual climb up. So it's not that bad. But once you hit about the halfway mark and you'll see the halfway point, once you hit that, that, that bridge, the bypass area, it starts to get pretty steep. And it's at that, at that last steep part where you're just like, oh my gosh, I, I can't make it anymore. <laughs> and you're seeing all these people come down. You're like, oh gosh, they made it, you know? And there's a lot of pride things going on in your mind. And that's one of the things I like about this hike is if, you're, if you got pride, if you try to be competitive and compete against other people, you're gonna tire yourself out and that's on you. That's not on them, that's not their fault, that's on you. And I think that's an important thing to remember is when you're doing this hike, you need to pace yourself for you. It's not a race, it's a competition with yourself. You're, you're, it's you against the trail and only you know how fast you need to go. In our group of people, one guy made it up there probably in 40 minutes maybe. I was behind maybe 10 minutes and then our other person who was with us maybe they took another 20 minutes or so and and that's fine it's not a race and in fact we got to enjoy the top a little bit longer we got to talk we got to rest and then while we're waiting for the other person to come up and it was totally fine so i would say pace yourself i know with hiking you kind of want to group up together and everyone goes up together and that's totally fine but People are at different levels in their physical fitness. And I would say if you're just average person, make sure that you take breaks and it's not a sign of weakness or embarrassment, especially if it's your first time. So I would say don't try to compete with people. I know there's that tendency of, oh, look, there's that person again. I'm gonna pass them and then, they, oh, they passed me. And then, no, it don't, don't, don't fall into that trap because at the end, you'll both be up there enjoying the views and then you'll both be coming down. So it's it's not really a race. It's more about, can you pace your own self? And again, I can tell you, every time I took a break, I was exhausted. I mean, really exhausted to the point where I was feeling pretty sick and that's my fault. So don't be like me. And tip number three is about safety. And that's a big one for all trails, but particularly this one because you know, looking at it, having done it, I, I would say it's it's kind of not really that safe, especially in certain areas, it's not so safe. So you wanna make sure that you're staying hydrated. I recommend bringing a hat, especially if it's super sunny, if you're in the middle of the day, you're gonna need some self shade, so bring a hat. But bring plenty of water, maybe bring a snack. If you do bring a snack, make sure, take your rubbish, your trash, put it in your bag, you don't wanna leave it on the trail. But more so with safety, you have to take your time and you have to watch your footing. There are so many people coming down, especially. It was like they were in a rush and so they kind of go, whoa, 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 and you hear the sliding noise and it's like, just just, just take your time, it's, it's, it's not a rush. If people are riding your tail and they wanna get around you, just stop, let them go by you and then just continue at your own pace. Again, it's, it's not a big deal, it's not a race. And so you wanna make sure that you're watching your step, taking your time, especially where it gets a little bit slippery. There's this point in the trail, I'd say around the halfway, maybe a little bit past the halfway mark, there's a bridge and it's where you're going on these tracks the entire time and then mostly have dirt in between. So it's like a step, but there's this one part where it's like just wooden beams and like a gulch. <laughs> and so you have to balance yourself on that the entire time. I guess people like to do that because it's exciting, but there's a safer route on the right. If you're going up the trail, it's on the right. If you're going down the trail, it's on the left. It's a bypass and it, ha it has signs, it's marked off. I'd recommend doing that because you don't have to go over a gulch. It's just a regular normal hike. And in fact, I, I personally think it's easier, but some people just want to go straight up the top. It's pretty dangerous especially if you're tired and you're going down, I wouldn't recommend it. Your legs are probably, you know, you, you get you get the wobble, you know, you get, you get the wobble knees and you start getting nervous and it's like, why would you do that? So I would recommend just going on the bypass, 
and just going off to the side. It's totally fine. It's not embarrassing. It's not the kiddie pool. It's not the training wheels. It's just a safer route. So I would definitely recommend that if you do decide to do it. It's just off to the side. It's marked off with a sign. I think that's the route to go. But overall, I think the view at the top was amazing. And I highly recommend it for anyone to go out and try it. I think it's worth doing the hike. I think the view at the top is amazing. Again, in terms of physical fitness levels, I'd say if you're average, you know, just make sure that you pace yourself, take plenty of breaks. It's no shame because honestly, nobody cares how many breaks you take. You're just gonna show off when you get to the top anyway, right? And so just get to the top, do what you can to get up there and then enjoy it. Enjoy the views, enjoy the wind. It's a really nice view at the top. I hope that my story and experience kind of made it easier to understand what the entire experience is like. Not just at the top where there's all the beautiful pictures and the views, but the in-between stuff, you know, the, the stuff you, you have to earn. And that's what I like about this hike. It's not, it's not like you get it for free. You have to earn those views. You know, you have to earn, you know, the scenery and stuff. And, you know, actually when you get to the hike and you, you go up, if you just turn around at any point in time, you can see a pretty amazing view. And, and I have to say that was pretty encouraging. The fact that it's not like it's all blocked off and the only view is at the top. If you just turn around at any, at any point, you can see a beautiful ocean the beach, you know, Hawaii Kai, you can see the town. It's, it's, it's nice, it's encouraging, and, and hopefully it can help push you to the top. You know, one of the things that pushed me when I was resting and feeling sick, like I was gonna throw up, was the view of downtown Honolulu. I could see the city, I could see the buildings, I could see where I live, and it was just encouraging to know that my wife was there and that she had done this hike before. Uh, but it was just encouraging to, to, to kind of get connected and to have something to kind of encourage me and push me because there was nobody with me. I was just by myself at the time when I was resting. So it was nice to kind of have that as a reminder and a visual reminder for me. So that was my experience at Coco Head. I do hope that you get an opportunity to do it. I think it's very challenging, but it's worth it. So thanks for watching this video and Aloha.